and get started. <clears throat> uh, my name is Rocio Casillas. I work for the Illinois State Board of Education, Special Education Department. Um, I'm a principal consultant. I oversee, help oversee all of the districts, but I do mainly work with the Chicago Public School District, so if that's where your students go, um, I might have a little bit more information, but I do have general information for all districts across the state. I hope you guys had a good lunch and are ready to start the afternoon sessions. Um, we'll save questions for the end, um, but if you have a really, really important question, I can go ahead and give you the mic and we can get that answered for you, okay? So our agenda for today, we're going to talk a little bit about the rights that you have as a parent, uh, federal and state law that um, cover students with special education. We'll talk about the IEP process, um, and then we'll go ahead and go over some acronyms that are important for you to know, and then we'll do a question and answer session at the end. If I'm talking too fast, please let me know, because I normally talk really, really fast. So some of your rights. Um, as a parent, you of, um, right to, I'm sorry, your child has the right to receive free and appropriate public education. Um, you have the right to request an evaluation to receive special um, education services and supports. The district must provide you with timely notification about any changes to your student services um, or any meetings about your child's education. Your consent must be provided for certain actions to take place. Um, by the school district, and we'll go over all the things that you need to um, give consent for later slide. Um, you have the right to participate meaningfully in the um, IEP process, including getting translation and, and interpretation supports. Um, you may also voice your disagreement, um, so if you don't agree with something that the school district is doing, you have the right to speak up um, and to seek dispute resolution. Uh, your student has the right to receive compensatory services um, if the district does not provide the services and supports to your student. Um, you should receive updates about your child's progress throughout the whole school year, so you have the right to that. Um, your child should be in the um, general education classroom as much as possible throughout the day and has the right to be with um, his general education peers. Um, and you have the right to request any and all copies of all your students' records and documents. So these are just some of the federal and state laws that cover your um, child's education. So the top ones are the ones that are across the country, and these are specific to of Illinois. Uh, so if you guys want to get that information and look those up on, on your own time, but the, um, the IDEA is one of the most important ones that you guys should be familiar with. All right, so the um, IEPs, the Individualized Education Plans. Um, just raise your hand, how many of your students already have an IEP? Okay, so most of you guys. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, some of you guys may have an IEP and some of you guys may have a 504. So they are two different things. Um, a 504 covers if a student has a mental or physical impairment. And if that physical or mental impairment um, limits the child in one of one or more major life activities, um, and so those are not it's not the same as an IEP, um, and we don't um, the State Board of Education doesn't handle 504s. Um, an IEP is if the child meets one or more of the 14 defined disability categories, um, and if it adversely impacts their educational performance. Uh, so these are the 14 disability categories, um, autism, deaf blindness, uh, deaf, uh, developmental delay, emotional disability, hearing impairment, um, and all the way down. So if your student um, has one or more of these, they would qualify for an IEP. If your student has a 504 and you have a complaint or concern or need more information, this is going to be the contact information. The Illinois State Board of Education doesn't take those concerns, um, so you would have to go um, to this office. So I'll give you guys a couple more seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about the IEP process. Um, we'll start all the way at the beginning. Um, if your student doesn't have an IEP, you can make a request to determine um, for the district to determine the child's eligibility for special education. The district has 14 school days to decide if they want to continue with an evaluation. 
the district can say no um, based off of any data or observations that they have. If the district does determine that um, they want to continue with an evaluation, they will determine uh, which domains will be evaluated and then get your consent. The evaluation cannot start until you as a parent provide written consent that it can begin. Um, after that, the, the school has 60 school days from when you give written consent to conduct an evaluation. It's important to note that if your student is an English learner and English is not their primary language, they have a right to be evaluated in their native language. Okay, so now you gave consent. Um, the school has 60 school days um, to take the steps needed to complete the evaluation. After that, on the 60th school day, or on the first day of the following school year, if there wasn't enough days left, um, they have to conduct an, an eligibility meeting with you. Um, here they'll determine um, if the child is eligible for special education or not. Again, they can decide that the student probably may not need it, um, but if they do need it, then the team will meet with you to develop an IEP. Um, at the IEP meeting, you'll determine um, initial services, um, and then again, you have to provide written consent for those services to start. Um, placement then begins no sooner than 10 days of the completed IEP, um, unless you give consent that it can start earlier. So the IEP team. Um, these are gonna be the people that you'll be meeting with. Um, depending on your students' um, services, there may be more people involved, but these are gonna be the general um, team. So it's gonna be you. You're one of the most important people on the team. Um, your student, after they reach a certain age, they must be invited. And if they would like to attend, they'll be part of the team. Their general education teacher, a special education teacher, um, a local school district representative, which sometimes is the case manager, and any related service providers. So if they receive occupational therapy, social work, speech, things like that, they'll be at the IEP meeting. Okay, so earlier we talked about things that you need to give consent. So the school cannot do these things unless you give written consent. Um, so the initial evaluation, um, to get re-evaluated, to begin the initial um, special education uh, re and related services, um, mutual and written agreement to extend the evaluation timeline, so if they need more than 60 days for that evaluation. Um, an excusal of an IEP team member. Sometimes um, not everyone can attend an IEP, meet, um, to, an IEP meeting, I'm sorry, and you have to give permission that it's okay to continue the meeting without them. Um, and usually if, they, if you agree, they'll provide all the information to the members of the team, so you have it at the meeting. Um, and then consent to release your child's records to a third party. So um, the district cannot release your, student rec your student's records to a third party unless you give consent. Okay, so there's two um, important pieces in an IEP that you should be um, asking questions about and making sure that um, it's written in the IEP. So the parent concerns, they're always gonna ask you, do you have any concerns at the time? When I review IEPs, a lot of the time the parents are like, no, like everything's okay. But it's really important to say whatever you're thinking, whatever, any questions that you have, um, make, them, make sure that they're noted in the parent concerns. Um, so um, talking about how they function at home versus school, if you have any concerns about that, if you notice any strains that the school team hasn't noticed, make sure they put it in there. Um, any issues that are impacting learning. So if there's medical, if there's personal family stuff going on, it's important for the team to know that and to have record that this could be affecting the student um, at this time. At the end, there's also an IEP note section. And a lot of times this is empty um, and it shouldn't be empty. This is where you should um, be asking again any questions that you have about the placement. If you disagree with anything, you say, I don't want my student to be doing this or that. This is where that should be noted. Um, they're part of the IEP and you should always get a copy of it and it should never be blank. So if it's blank, you need to go back and make sure that they're noting um, what really happened at the IEP. All right, interpreters and translated documents. If English is not your primary language um, and your child is an English learner, you have the right to get all the IEP documents in your native language. So that's pr the procedural safeguards. All the draft IEPs that you get before a meeting 
those should be in your native language. Um, IEP documents, the waivers, all the consent forms that you sign should be in your language. Um, you also have a right to have a qualified bilingual specialist or a, um, or a teacher as part of the IEP team um, when needed to un make sure that we're understanding your child's language and cultural factors and how that affects um, their education. Um, and you also have um, the right to get inter interpretation services at an eligibility IEP meeting um, and any due process, like if you go, if you disagree with the, the IEP team and you take it to due process, you have a right to have an interpre interpreter at that meeting. Um, so these are some of the important acronyms that um, you'll see a lot. Um, I'll give you guys a chance to take a picture, but some of the ones that are really, really important are always going to be IEP, um, FAPE. They'll use that a lot. Um, they'll just say FAPE. Um, it just means that free, appropriate public education. Um, if your student has behavioral issues, you'll hear BIP and FBA a lot. So a BIP is just the plan um, for their behavioral issues. Um, and a functional behavioral analysis is the process that they have in order to make that behavior intervention plan. And then ISBE, um, if you ever need to contact us, that's where, oh, I'm sorry, that's where I work at. So that's um, the acronym down there. Um, the QR code will take you to our website for parent information. So I'll give you guys a chance to scan that. And then my email and office number is going to be there. That last email is um, for the whole special education department. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me personally, um, that's my email right there. Um, I know that was kind of fast. Does anyone have any questions? Um, if I can um, share it, yes, I can share it. Um, I'll see with the conference, uh, the people who hosted the conference, I'll give it to them and they can share it out to, to you guys. Good afternoon. Um, my question is about um, the school, you know, uh, regular school, they provide like music, art, gym, and all these uh, classes. Mm -hmm. But for our special needs kids, you know, I don't know if this is legal or not, but um, the um, assistant principal told us that we want extra like music class or we need to look for in our own. So they don't provide those classes to our kiddos and I think for example, music is um, in my story. I'm a music teacher. I know music helps a lot to develop. Mm -hmm. And for example, I have expressed my um, my points to them because also as a parent uh, in an IEP, they don't accept our opinions. They said the parents are part of a main part also in the mm -hmm. uh, IEP. But in any of the IEPs, I have heard and people said, "Oh, as parents, I think this is uh, something good that you are bringing out." Uh, so we can follow up. So I just know how, how legal it is because uh, it's so sad that they don't provide those um, extra classes that I think our kids need. And for example, art is not really an art class. It's just like they are cutting or you know using a skill, like a very basic skills for kindergarten. For example, when we have already kids in uh, um, high school or you know kids that are going high school. So I don't know how exactly it, that information it is because um, I was kind of down when they told me if you need music for your kids, you need to look for outside because the school district doesn't provide those services for your special need kids. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so if, if your district has music and elective classes like art and gym, um, they should be allowing um, students with special needs to be in those classes, um, even if that means having accommodations, uh, maybe a paraprofessional, but they shouldn't be um, excluding them from having elective classes. Um, can I ask what district? Uh, Clarity Elementary School here. Okay. Uh, Like when you were in elementary school, you have, you, you have music. 
but I feel like you should be in here uh, in the middle school que no musical I do that on my own but I feel like what happened is those parents are sad yeah. and they don't have it so it's like that was a really sad person like should be in here or look for outside because the schools don't provide it no the school should still be providing um, and allowing kids with special needs and on IEPs to have access to those elective classes. Um, so if a parent wanted to um, file a state complaint, they can do that on our, on our website because that they should be able to um, attend those elective classes. Mi pregunta es, este, por ejemplo, en, en mi distrito, que es del 87, mm -hmm. en las escuelas de pre-kinder, mm, mi hijo tiene, es autista y lo tuvieron que mandar a otro, por ejemplo, yo soy de Norley, a Maywood y viajo diario para allá y este, porque no tienen para niños como mi hijo Ajá. en esa escuela de mi, mi comunidad Ajá. y ahí qué, qué es lo que procedería, ¿no? Did everyone um, get that question? No, so she's, um, her, her um, student um, has autism, is at, um, they're in one district, but he's now going to another school district to receive services. Um, and so that happens sometimes. Um, if the school district doesn't have the resources, um, they can outplace um, to a different district, uh, maybe a therapeutic day school. Um, but they should be providing, your school district should be providing transportation um, to, since they're taking you to another school in another district. Uh, they should be allowing you to have access to transportation, so you shouldn't be taking him um, every day. Yeah, does that answer your question? It's because sometimes, um, sometimes the district doesn't have the resources um, that your student may need. He may need um, some things that they don't have. And so in order to have free and appropriate ed um, education, they're ta sending him to another school that has the resources um, and services for your student. So it is possible, so that does happen um, a lot if the school district doesn't have what he needs. Yeah, but if you don't want that, you can say that you don't want him to go to another school district. He just may not get the services that he should be getting. Does that answer your question? Yes. Question. I have a question. For example, when your kid is uh, eligible for a s um, ded dedicated Zika, mm -hmm. so that means that the Zika is just with him, right? Mm -hmm. And what can I do if you they are using that Zika for another three or four kids? Okay. So Zika in um, Chicago Public School is just another name for a paraprofessional. So her student should have a dedicated paraprofessional, a one-to-one. -one. Um, so you should go first to your um, administration. So if you've already talked to your principal, your assistant principal, um, and it's still happening, do you know the name of your district representative? I can help you look that up later. So CPS has a district representative. You would comp um, file your concerns with them. And if it's still not um, changing, then you would file a state complaint um, with the state and then um, to make sure that he's getting his minutes with his dedicated one-to-one -one because um, your dedicated one-to-one -one should not be helping with lunch, should not be helping with recess, should not be helping other students. They're not there to babysit other kids in the classroom. They're, they're there for your student. If it's a shared paraprofessional or SICA, that might be a little bit different. Um, it just depends on how it's written in the IEP, but a dedicated one cannot be with anyone but your student. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, my son is in a therapeutic school right now. Um, just want to know, they don't let us allow as parents to go and observe him. I know in the district, um, they used to let us go and observe for five, 10 minutes. And this is something that we have been asking why they don't let us go and observe. And our district doesn't have the control that because this is an outside placement. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have been telling me that they work with the FPI, como no, lo, el para niños, okay. F, el, los F de, de DCFS. No sé DCFS, yeah. So they said that they protect, uh, it's for the privacy of the other kids who has a, a 
different uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, but when you see that your kid is uh, getting bites or, and they don't give information and, um, and we have been trying to knock the door and I said, okay, we can observe someone else can come and they don't let us, you know, uh, bring people to observe. So if this is correct, because this is a different organization, therapeutics, mm -hmm. and they said they have their own policies, and that's what they follow. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like uh, this is, uh, I don't think this is right, and parents, we can have five minutes. We are not going there to judge mm -hmm. what I other kids' disabilities are. We just wanna be there, wha what's going on? What is the behavior? Because sometimes they complain about behaviors, and then you don't know exactly, you know, um, at least that they can allow us to observe five, 10 minutes. It's how we can get an authorization or something as parents so they can open their door to us to observe. So unfortunately, um, the all schools, all districts and therapeutic day schools make their own policies when it comes to things like that. Um, so if they don't allow, if it's their policy to not have parents come in, that's not something that the state can go in and, and have them change it. Um, I would suggest maybe getting an advocate or um, going through dispute matters um, to see if this is something that you can, if it's not changing. Um, just unfortunately, that's not something that um, we can have a say in. If, if those are their policies, then that's what we have to respect. And some school districts also have a policy that doesn't allow parents to come in. So it, it doesn't really mean just because it's a therapeutic day. It's just depending on the district. Yeah. There is a question Does back there. Yeah, a lot of things change. Sí, buenas tardes. Yo nada más quería preguntar, o si me puede ayudar, ¿verdad? Como si un niño con una educación especial lo, pueden re, lo pudieron haber reprobado en el año de la pandemia, uh -huh. con educación especial, aparte de eso, con ahora problemas médicos, eh, sí es verdad, ¿verdad? Que lo tenían que reprobar en ese año y ahora lo están haciendo pagar para este verano las materias reprobadas. Okay, did everybody get that question? So um, she has a student in special education who um, failed during the pandemic. Um, and, uh, ¿Puede repetir su, um, su pregunta? Uh, que si es verdad, es que si es verdad que pueden reprobar a un niño durante la pandemia con okay. una educación especial, ahora con problemas uh, médicos, si es verdad que lo podían haber ha hecho reprobar materias y hacerlo pagar ahora en este verano, okay. ni siquiera en el de la pandemia, en este verano. Okay, so she's saying, uh, is, it, is it okay that a school failed um, a student with special needs during the pandemic and is now having them make, up, make it up um, this summer, um, not even the summer right after the pandemic. Um, so your student is from CPS or no? Okay, so that's a little bit different. Their recovery services, um, as some districts started doing that after the pandemic, having recovery services. Um, so if a student um, was failing uh, or they were just um, losing um, progression in their goals, um, they created recovery services after the pandemic to make up for the loss. Um, CPS started theirs really late, and so that's why they're not doing their recovery services until now. Um, so they didn't have recovery services immediately after the pandemic. Um, so if your student was um, failing or losing progression in their goals, um, they could be having them do um, make up for it now with recovery services. But are you saying that he's going to um, extended school year? If you want, I can, that's a really, um, um, unique question because it's, it is CPS, so we can talk about it after. Mm -hmm. Can you pass? Yeah, thank you. My question is uh, when the, the student uh, finishes uh, high school, mm -hmm. this program is uh, followed to, to the college? Or? IEPs? Uh -huh. no. I, no. So after high school um, and they go to college, um, all universities have like a disability resource center um, and they can get accommodations. Um, for their classes, but they don't have an IEP anymore. They don't have IEP meetings or anything like that. But if your student is going um, to um, college or university, I recommend looking into their Disability Resource Center. Sometimes their name's different, but um, they assist with accommodations and creating um, like a different kind of plan for the student to be successful. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? 
my, uh, my name is Anna. And my son, uh, he's in the second grade, and, uh, and he has some problems socializing. Uh, and I think that he is uh, on the Asperger's syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to, uh, I'm still working on his speech and uh, try, I'm trying to diagnose him, but um, I uh, reach out to school and um, uh, search, I search for some kind of help, like social groups or mm -hmm. uh, in speech therapy and um, at the school where like the, the people were there watching him for a little bit. I had a me meeting with a with a group of uh, psychologists, social worker, uh, assistant principal, mm -hmm. and they said that uh, since my son is not falling behind with his academics, we cannot get any help from school. Okay. And uh, I said yes, for now he's not, but I don't want to wait for any bullying which already took place or other social problems. Uh, with him to fall into the uh, behind with his academics and then look for like bigger solutions. So mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if there's anything I can do now. After that, they they said no. Can I? Is there any other step for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went through the request to get an evaluation. They evaluated him, and then they told you he's not eligible for services. Um, I would recommend going and getting a private evaluation. Um, and having him, um, you know, having that diagnosis on there. Um, Asperger's can also be called autism. Yes. Um, so I would recommend getting a private evaluation um, and bringing that to the school to see if they can do a reevaluation. Sorry, but is there any way to request social groups or any other activities that would encourage him with the um, socialization of other kids? Yeah. Because this is his biggest problem. So you can ask the school to um, provide, uh, maybe doing some work with the social worker and maybe other kids that are receiving, but if he doesn't have an IEP, they don't have to give him um, social work services. Yeah, so I would just maybe reach out to the teachers and kind of ask them to um, do more so socialization with him, um, but if it's not on the IEP, the school doesn't have to provide social work services. Right, because they say like it, 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 it doesn't, um, have anything to do with his academics, they, they cannot do it, they don't really care. So yeah, so sometimes if, uh, when they do the evaluation and they see that they're not um, like failing classes and they're doing really good, sometimes that um, that's part of the data. Um, th that's why I said maybe get a, a private evaluation mm -hmm. for your student and then bringing that back to the school. And then uh, they will have to do something about it. They don't have to, but um, if they see a diagnosis from like a private e um, evaluation, then they might redo their evaluation and start the process over again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, so I have just have a general question um, about the IEP process. Mm -hmm. When, during the IEP process, um, should a school district um, be giving information to parents about other options um, regarding like homebound or other placement options? Um, does, does that make sense? I have a yeah. unique situation and yeah. I'm kind of wondering, I just want to make sure the parents understand that, that the school um, Placement is not the only option that the parents mm -hmm. have, and so I don't know that it's being communicated. Um, it's probably not being communicated um, because that's something that a parent would ask for. So the school should, the school district should be giving you um, all the placement options at the time. Um, but like homebound, they won't really recommend uh, if your student can be attending school. So if you have a different situation, we could talk about it after, um, but they won't. They won't tell you about homebound at a, like initial IEP meeting, um, just because the goal is to have your student um, in the school and be in the general education setting as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Someone else had a question. Hablo en español. <risa> ok, eh, para, para entrar en el IEP hay una cantidad de procesos, este, los 60 días y todo esto, pero ya un niño cuando está en el high school, en el caso de mi hijo que está en el high school, la, la transición a la, al, al, vamos a decir, a, a lo regular, ¿tenemos algunas agencias o... O, per, o personas encargadas que nos ayuden también en esta transición? 
Porque si, si, no sé si me entiendes, o sea, así como evaluamos eh, toda una junta y, e insertamos al niño desde el, su escolaridad, ¿Cómo es la transición hacia la salida? Pues, o uh -huh. sea, ¿sí? ¿Cómo es la transición hacia la salida? Porque yo estoy en ese proceso y estoy un poco perdida. Estaba clara en el proceso cuando él estaba en la elemental uh -huh. y pasamos al high school. Ha sido bien diferente. El trato, inclusive, es diferente. Eh, sí, porque, claro, están transicionándolo, están tratando de que el niño se inserte en el, en el, en el proceso normal. No, hay, no es igual que el elemental. Es muy diferente. Uh -huh. eh, pero, pero pregunto, o sea, ¿va a haber una junta que me van a decir, mira, si ¿sí está listo para su vida regular o termina su, su senior? Y, y ya, pues, o sea, ¿a quién le pregunto? ¿Estamos listos o no estamos listos? So her question is, um, her student is in high school, and if there's a process um, kind of to get ready f um, to transition out of an IEP after graduation, like, what does that process look like? Do they just stop the IEP and you're ready or, or she wants to know is there a meeting something like that to say you're done with an IEP or not done with an IEP right okay so um, once they get into the high school age they should be having a that part of their IEP is a transition plan um, in that transition plan um, they interview your student they say what do you want to do like what what kind of jobs do you like um, what are your interests outside of, and so they do interviews and they have a transition plan that's in place for this purpose, um, to get ready for exiting high school and going into you know, the adult real world. Um, and so the, the teacher should be helping him and guiding him to figure out what his goals are. Um, after high school, does he wanna go to college, community college? Does he wanna go to a work or trade school? Um, that should all be part of the plan and in the IEP. Um, have they not done that with you yet or with your student? Yes. So she's saying that they already started with her student and who's in 10th grade and um, she's just wondering like how they set him up for leaving. There's a lot of preparation that goes into having an IEP and starting an IEP, but not so much on the, the end. Mm -hmm. And so she's saying that it causes anxiety because it puts it mo more on the student and she feels that they're kind of like stepping away um, and kind of placing it all on him. So they shouldn't be stepping away. They should still be providing all the services that he's been getting on his IEP and really supporting him. Um, but because he is um, going to leave soon, he's on his journey to leave soon, they're trying to set him up for knowing what he wants to do after. So it is an anxious process. Um, but it, it is the process, and so um, he's still in 10th grade, so he still has a couple years left, and he can change it. He can say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, and he can change it on his plan, and it's not set in stone. So if he says something um, in your upcoming meeting, that's not what it, it doesn't have to be that next year. He can always change, um, and he'll learn that as he's going through the next couple of years as well. Yeah, and if, if he's having anxiety, maybe, um, going with a social worker, yeah, and asking for that type of service. Um, or maybe peer groups with other students that are um, in his classes that are going through the transition plan as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Somebody else had a question. But they, they can appeal until 22 years old, right? Yes.
Yes, they do have the opportunity to um, stay in school until t um, 22 years old. They'd just be like in a transition program. Um, so they'd finish senior year and then they'd be in a different setting. So they wouldn't be with like the seniors anymore. They'd be in a different um, type of setting and it's called a transition program. Sometimes school ha schools have their own. Sometimes they go to different um, schools to, to attend that program. So if that's something that he's interested in, I can give you some resources. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so I know the child that he was diagnosed with autism, mm -hmm. and he he, re um, he received uh, services until second grade, I think. But uh, he's going to third grade, mm -hmm. but they're removing most of the services. Is that they, they can do that or? can take off services uh -huh. if they see, if the school team sees that they, he may not need it anymore and he's doing good um, without them. Um, but if they're taking off most of the services, it could be a little bit concerning. Um, so I would just um, kind of question that with the IEP team. Um, maybe having an advocate present. Mm -hmm. um, so they usually advocates know, um, they know, they're really familiar with special education law and the process, um, and they can attend IEP meetings with the parent. Um, is, are you the parent or is someone else? The Somebody parent? else. So they, else. They, I think they just leave um, speech for the child. Okay. But they remove like, um, I think, what was it, like physical therapy and uh, OT and uh, what else? Social worker, I think, yeah. So things like p uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy, those sometimes get taken off and put back on depending on um, the needs of the student. So if he didn't need occupational therapy anymore, um, they probably took that off. Social work is a little concerning, um, but I would just again question the IEP team and if the parent disagrees with that, um, there's, um, process, uh, there's a process for them to file a state complaint mm -hmm. if they, don't, um, if they um, disagree with the IEP team's decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. Por ejemplo, yo te, mi hijo tiene autismo, uh -huh. entonces él nos, nos rigimos por las, las rutinas. Uh -huh. Entonces, ah, cuando tuvimos la junta del IEP, fue lo primero que yo les dije. So, hicimos un plan y ahorita yo lo que estoy viendo es de que no están respetando, no están siguiendo lo que es el plan. Por ejemplo, hay días, dos, tres veces lo han dejado sin lonche, porque la persona que tiene que suplir a la psica uh -huh. siempre es diferente. Entonces, no le dan el esquecho del niño uh -huh. y yo me di cuenta porque el niño me dijo, mami, Alexis tenía hambre. So, yo hablé con la psica y me dijo, es que ellos no tienen como orden. Uh -huh. ¿Yo qué puedo hacer en ese caso? Okay, so she's saying that um, her son has autism and they agreed to a routine in the IEP meeting. Um, but they're not following that routine, and sometimes he goes without lunch because there's not enough coverage, um, again, with the SICA or paraprofessional. Um, so you have a right to voice your concerns. Again, so CPS is different. Um, there's a district representative, and I would recommend um, requesting that the district representative attend the meeting because if he, ha um, he shouldn't be missing lunch. That's probably one of the most concerning things, um, but uh, making sure that they're following um, the services on his IEP because that is a legal document, so they have to follow it. Um, and if things need to be, um, if uh, things need to be rearranged, um, then you have to they they have to meet and do it. Um, but I would recommend going to the um, district representative, and I have the list so I can give you the name. The district representative. No. So in CPS, again, is a little bit different. They have a case manager, and then they have an ODLSS district representative. And so they oversee your whole network, um, and they attend IEP meetings um, if the parent requests, if there's um, concerns going on or anything like that. So I can give you the list um, at the end. Um, in CPS, no. Um, CPS, um, CPS has an office of 
diverse learners, which is their special education department. And because CPS is so big, um, you can't just call the director of special education like you could with another district. Um, so they have um, district representatives, and in each network, there's one or two. And so they kind of like, they're in between case managers, district representatives, and then the Office of um, Special Education. Yeah. ¿Qué es lo que sucede cuando en la transición de elementary school to middle school o middle school a high school, la respuesta es la pérdida de los papeles? Ok, y exacto. ¿Y qué hacer los padres? En este caso, eso me pasó a mí, sino oye, lo primero que acabo de decir otra señora, que... En cada escuela, supuestamente, como, como me ha dicho, tienen un plan. Uh -huh. Cuando pase de, sex, de quinto a sexto grado, se sigue el plan. Uh -huh. Pero no, hay una reevaluación porque están en foja cero. Me refiero a que van a estudiarlo de nuevo y van a ver qué es lo que van a hacer. Eh, bueno, yo he sido miembro de BIPAD de mucho tiempo y yo tuve que decirles uh -huh. que en qué nivel estaba mi hijo punto por punto para que ellos lo siguieran. Y así lo siguieron, pero otros padres no tuvieron la oportunidad. Uh -huh. En este caso, el primer caso es de, de una de mis este, bueno, madres que, que estaba conmigo, que perdieron la evaluación, según ellos, y que volvían a tener que hacer la evaluación. Y entonces, ese periodo es muy importante uh -huh. para, el, para el avance del niño. Entonces, ¿dónde podemos nosotros um, ver qué se puede hacer? Porque puede ser un caso, ok, pero dos o tres creo que ya no está bien. Um, so she's saying that um, when the students transition from like school, so from elementary to middle, middle to high school, um, that a lot of time and um, documents get lost. So they end up starting over the reevaluation. They don't have data points from the past um, to kind of go off on. So they kind of just start over. And a lot of the times the parents are the ones that are having to say, I mean, this is where my student is at. And it, it, that's not supposed to happen. Um, so again, if that is happening, that is um, legal matter. So I would get um, dispute resolution involved. Um, they, there's occasions where sometimes they will reevaluate because it happens to be their reevaluation time. Um, yes, but there should still be connection between the previous IEP and they should still have those. The, those, those should transfer at the end of every school year to the following school year. So if they're in the same district, um, the school should be sending those documents to the next um, school, even if it's um, a physical paper or an electronic file. So your school should, um, should be doing that. Um, I would recommend um, seeking legal um, help for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of my uh, question is because um, in this therapeutic school I have seen the teachers don't last much there. So for example, my son has four different teachers in, uh, in this year than he has been there. And uh, for example, in the IEP, um, the teacher who was there was new. So she told me, I'm sorry, I don't know your son because I just have a few days working here. I'm just reading the report, and so I want to appreciate that you can give me time to know your son so I can advise you what, you know, what is the best. But um, uh, we supposed, like, um, I know that if a teacher has been working with them, they're supposed to give the report because you as a parent wants to know how is uh, working at school. But if every time there is a new new teacher, you know, that is something I have been uh, uh, having in my experience, sometimes you don't know how much do the teacher really know your kids. Um, or, for example, um, uh, on and on, that is their um, excuse. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a new teacher. And for example, I don't get any notification from the school when they have a new teacher mm -hmm. if, I, is, if it is not for myself or something that I go and ask something at school. Like um, I ask, oh, can I speak with the teacher? Because I have been emailed the teacher and I haven't gotten any response. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, she's no longer working here. So it's something that, uh, of course, I understand that working in special education classrooms is not easy. Uh, but sometimes I feel like they don't support us parents. Like, you really don't know what are they working, what are they doing, because if there is always someone new, their answer is going to be, I'm sorry, I'm new, and I just need time to know your kid. Mm -hmm. uh, then I don't know how, 
how we can get a support from that. So unfortunately, um, there is a statewide special education teacher vacancy problem. Um, and that's something that we at the state are trying to find ways to improve that. So every district in the state is having issues with keeping teachers. Um, every, every district has um, high teacher vacancies, meaning that they don't have a full staff of special education teachers. So it's a problem we're seeing statewide. Um, so fortunately, that's something that's really common right now. It shouldn't be happening, but it, it is happening. We don't have enough special education teachers, and we don't have enough bilingual special education teachers. So that's something that we're trying at the state to problem solve and find ways to get more teachers um, graduating. What I do want to tell you, though, is that, like I mentioned earlier, you have a right as a parent to know anything that changes about your student's education, and that includes um, staff ch changes. So your, your school should be um, notifying you that uh, there's a new teacher and giving you that contact information so you can stay in contact with them. So. Yeah, so I would just go and make sure to tell them that um, uh, I can give you, you'll have this, um, so you can go and take them that by law, they have to let you know um, at the minimum that there's a new teacher. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And, uh, bilingual parent liaison mm -hmm. and I work with IP meetings and all stuff uh, as an interpreter and you say that the parents are the ones that request an evaluation for IPs mm -hmm. and in our case uh, the kids are bilingual and most of the schools say that they need time because they can be evaluated and academic level because they don't have the uh, the staff? Uh, no, not the staff. It's uh, because the, the language, it's not English. Mm -hmm. So that they say that if they are behind, it's because they are learning the language. Yeah. And for us, it's like it's obvious that something is happening, even for the teacher, but they just give that now, give them time, <laughs> maybe next year, and we check again. Well, they even did check. They just say that um, it's because the, la the language barrier, that's it. Yes, so we um, are seeing a lot of um, people calling in and even staff saying that this is happening, um, that the school is saying um, it's the language and that that's why they're falling behind. Um, and so kids are either being um, over, um, like give, uh, there's some districts that are giving too many IEPs because they're saying, oh, he has a disability because he doesn't speak English. And so that's wrong. And then other districts are, are saying, no, he doesn't have a disability. It's because he doesn't speak English, which is also wrong. So again, by law, the student has to, um, well, so they don't, again, so a parent can request an evaluation and the district doesn't have to do it, but it shouldn't be based off of the language. And again, I would recommend um, seeking legal help for that because, um, that shouldn't be the reason why. They, they should be evaluated in that language to then see if it's the language or if they have a disability. Um, so that's what I would recommend, um, um, maybe having an advocate or legal help to make sure that the school is at least um, evaluating in that language. Generalmente en mi escuela, a pesar que el porcentaje es altamente hispano, eh, nos lo dan en inglés. ¿Cómo podemos pedir respetuosamente que se nos lo dé en español? Si bien es cierto, hay algunas reglas que ni en español la podemos entender. Eh, eh, necesitaríamos más información acerca de las escalas que ellos utilizan. ¿no? Es bien eh, duro, tanto en español y pienso peor en inglés, eh, eh, para saber qué exactamente es lo que... No, nos están informando porque hay, hay algunas confusiones incluso en inglés que no ves si esto te lo viste aquí y esto está igual y por qué son, son tantas las diferencias uh -huh. entre evaluador y evaluador, ¿no? Me refiero a social worker, uh -huh. etcétera, education, 
So she's asking um, in regards to documents, um, how she can respectfully ask for the documents to be um, in their native language. Again, that's um, by law, they, sh they have to be giving it to you in your native language. The only thing I would say is that um, at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the time that you enroll your student, you fill out a home language survey. On the home language survey, sometimes people will put um, that they do speak English because they'll say like, oh, I, my, my daughter who also lives in the home speaks English. And so if you accidentally put English, um, they're gonna give them to you in English. So they, they're not, it's like a loophole, like they got saved and they don't have to give them to you. Um, but if you don't understand it and you messed up on that language survey, um, you, you can go and tell them that you don't understand the language and they have to give you the documents. So she's saying that in her students' IEPs, it says that um, speaking Spanish is the reason for the disability, um, and so I that they should not be doing that, um, and so. Mm -hmm. And so for, for the, the way the IEP is written, I would remember the parent concerns page, say I know that that's not my, the reason why my student has a, debil a disability, make sure it's in the concerns page. Um, and then for the second part, um, they have to give them to you in Spanish. Um, yeah, so I would just go um, keep, keep pushing. I know that it's hard, you shouldn't have to keep pushing as a parent, um, but they have to give them to you in Spanish. la compañera que está diciendo yo llevo cinco años año tras año pidiendo eh, los papeles precisamente en español eh, o cada evaluación o a veces cada dos veces al año que se hacen las juntas uh -huh. eh, yo pido he hablado con la directora he hablado con la, el director de educación especial uh -huh. con la, tradu la, tra la que me traduce y, dice, y me dice que no tienen quien traduzca. Pero ahora que ya nos está usted comentando de que tenemos el derecho, entonces sí lo tenemos, pero si ellos, o sea, en, en mi caso yo ya lo he, yo ya lo he pedido, uh -huh. entonces ¿cómo yo puedo...? Ah, hay, yo como mamá a veces sé lo que quiero, pero no sé cómo explicarme uh -huh. ante ellos o, o no sé cuál sea a mí mi... Eh, como para defender a mi hijo en, en otro, o sea, como que ne uh, se necesita más como, como más juntas para saber qué es lo que podemos hacer más. Uh -huh. Porque si, dice usted, nos tienen que dar esas cosas en español uh -huh. y si yo las pido y dicen que no, entonces, ¿qué se puede hacer más? Uh -huh. So she's saying that um, she has been going through this where the um, school doesn't give her the documents in Spanish or provide translation. Um, and so she wants to know what can she do. She's already spoken to the team, the principal, the special education director, so like what's next? Um, so there's advocates, again, that I mentioned earlier. You can take those to your meetings, um, but you can also file a state complaint. Um, and I know I mentioned that a few times, so I can pull up that website so you could see how to find the form. Um, but I would recommend seeking legal help because they have to be providing interpreter services and translated documents. The only thing I would ask is if the home language survey does say English, just by you accidentally did that a long time ago, you filled it out once a long time ago, um, that's probably, they, they could be saying no to that, but we can check on that after after the meeting. So parents, parents advocating? Um, I can pull it up.
Um, I'll look for it right now and then I can I can give it. It's on the parent education, um, the QR code that I had up. It gives, it leads you to this page. Um, it, it sends you to, um, it sends you to this page, parent guardian information. And then it also gives you the parent guide and it's all in Spanish as well. So you can go through it in Spanish um, or English. And then I'll find the advocates in just a second. Does anybody else have any other questions? So the QR code that I shared. Quería preguntarle. Con con el teléfono. Con el teléfono. Quería preguntarle si una vez que podamos conseguir los papeles en español puede ser retroactivo. Me refiero a que podamos tener siquiera por lo menos desde que ha estado en Haití, alguna pequeña información para que no para poder ver los avances, mm -hmm. ¿no? En, en general. Mm -hmm. So she wants to know if the school does finally give them, um, give her the translated documents, can she get them from the current one and all the ones that weren't given to her in the past? Um, and they should, they should do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Mm, do you know how they can watch the recording after? Um, I can ask. I'm not sure how. Um, it might be on the on the website after. I'm not sure. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So, yo quiero hacer um, una queda. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, she's saying that in her specific case, they didn't have a special education teacher, a bilingual, uh, a bilingual specialist, or a bilingual special education teacher. So, her student went without services for the whole year. So, she's looking for how to file a state complaint. Um, so, I can pull that. That's going to be on our website. Um, it's a form that you fill out. It's um, when you go to ISB. This is our website, isb.net, isbe.net, and then you go to our special education. Down here in the middle, in the middle column, um, is the complaint investigation process. So here are going to be the forms in all the languages. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, she's talking about a settlement. Um, CPS was um, they had a, a they were sued for not having interpreters and translators at IEP meetings, um, and so there's a settlement going on um, both with the state and CPS. If you go to CPS. Um, but they're currently working on developing a program so that more people can get certified. So they're currently, um, they, they had a settlement, and so more staff is going to start being certified, but they're developing that program right now. Mm -hmm. I said, um, the parent guide to um, special education services, um, the QR code um, that I put up, it'll take you to it. It's. A state of Illinois, uh -huh. so it's the special education um, parent guide to special education, um, and it's both in English and in Spanish, and it goes through um, your dispute resolution, so your rights to um, how to file a state complaint, 
Um, it gives you all the timelines for all the different processes that you will go through um, and all the different information. I definitely recommend um, going through that. Um, again, so the QR code that you scan will take you to the page where it's at. Mm -hmm. de los, los, los procedimientos de la carta cuando tú quieres hacer un complaint o cuando quieres agradecer está muy bueno yeah it gives you um, like prompts and stuff on how to start complaints and um, things like that okay anything else all right well thank you so much for um, taking the time I know I said I was going to talk to a couple of you guys I um, mean I can give you the, the the name of the district representative Um, and guess what?